Hello everyone, welcome to the second lecture of the Streamlit series. In this video, we will be dealing with the data display elements of Streamlit. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is import the basic stuff like Streamlit as ST. Uh, we also need NumPy, so I'll say num import NumPy as NP. We will also need Pandas for this lecture so we'll say pandas.pd and lastly i also have to show you json so i'll import json okay so i hope the first three are downloaded by pip install and the last one is already available in um, python so you don't have to download so i'll first go to the folder where this is there so i have to go to data then i need to go to streamlet then i need to go to video code and then i have to write streamlit run and here I need to give the lecture to so as you can see the, in the browser this particular window has opened and now we can start coding so first thing that I need to do is I need to show you data frame so I'll be showing you four, four widgets today or four elements today first is the data frame then we are going to see the table we are also uh, table then we are also going to see metric and lastly we are going to see JSON so first I'm going to show you uh, data frame so I'm going to say first I'm going to create a data frame so I'm going to say pd dot data frame in the next line I'm going to have a random function to just create random numbers so random dot rand n so it's mostly taken from the uh, example that is there in the documentation because it's very very simple and very very easy to understand However, I'll be also showing you other things wherever necessary. So let me name the columns. So I'm going to say calls. Let me give it a different. So str dot str of i for i in range. How many columns are there? Well, 20 columns are there. Uh, as you can see, there are 20 over here. Okay. So what you can do is you can generally in the last video you saw you could write just do st dot write and df and this should work. You go over here and you can see you have the uh, data frame over here so as you can see there are not, there are 10 uh, rows that are being shown but you can see a slider over here and then you can see there were 50 rows which is 49 index and then if, and then there are uh, 20 columns so 0 column 0 up to column 19 okay and you can click on one and then this will sort and this will you know reverse sort or descending order and then come back to the same order so that was one but there are definitely some things that we are going to do with this so instead of this what you can also do is you can write data frame okay st dot data frame and pass the same df okay so over here you'll go back to the browser and then click on rerun so you can see the same thing has happened so there's not nothing much that is different however there are two to three things that you can change over here number one is the width and height so for example what you can do it what you can do is you can go over here and write width is equals to 200 and then height let's say is equals to 100 or we will change it to 10 also then we will see what happens so now if you rerun you can see the height has been shrinked so earlier it was 10 elements in the rows here you can see only two okay so if you just go down you can see all the elements are there but the problem is the height has been reduced so what you would do is either ideally you would increase the height 10 times so now let me go and rerun this so you can see a lot has been printed okay okay so you can see till 49 or let me just go on the top and see till how many it has printed um till 26 at least half of the data frame has been printed just like this okay so obviously you can change the height and width and everything hopefully that is clear what you can also do is instead of directly you know if, instead of making a data frame what you can do is just write a data frame and then print the numpy function itself so random dot random now if you are just going to use it simply and you know don't have you don't care about the columns and everything you just want to print it so you can use just like this only you don't have to write data frame and pd all that stuff just take the main part that is np.random.random and write it over here in st.dataframe and once you go back and then you rerun this you can see the entire thing has come okay so if let's say you don't care about a lot of uh, cleaning and all that stuff you can do like this also okay 
so this was there for data frame now we are done with data frame now the second thing is table now table is very very simple okay it's a lot easier than data frame it's simply going to take the data frame and print it nothing else there is no customization for example here you can change width height in the table you can't do any customization this is bare printing nothing else okay so here you go and rerun so you see the entire thing has been printed okay the entire thing has been printed now uh, so table is nothing it just takes whatever data is there and print everything now let me go and see the other one that that is metric now this is important so for example you might have seen in, so let's say you are looking at stock data so obviously there will be a stock and then the stock price for let's say we will be taking the example of tcs data consultancy services and then there is a increment and de or decrement so if there is some increment it will show you in green okay so it will show you an up arrow and then some green and if it is in a uh, if the stock value has decreased then it will give you in negative red color and then some value will be uh, given and the triangle will be bottom so the pointy part will be on the bottom part okay so that is how stock market price fluctuations are given on let's say on tv and other places so in order to show that one i'm going to say something like that st dot metric uh, i'm going to pass the name as tcs so we'll let's say tcs stock tcs stock and then I have to give the value. So today morning I checked it was 3220.70. Okay. Now I have to print the delta. I have to give the delta. Delta is the change. Okay. So obviously, you know, uh, a stock opens at, opens at some rate. Let's say this was 3220.70. It opened at this, this many rupees. And, you know, or whatever. It was yesterday's closing price. Whatever. And... Now what you will have is you will have some change increment or decrement. So here what I am going to do is um, I am going to write 19.10. This was the change. Now the problem is stock can either go up or down. If the stock goes up um, you have to give it green. If the stock goes down you have to give it uh, negative or red. So here you can uh, specify that with let's say delta color. Okay. So if I give delta color as none, so the default if default is if this is positive, it will be green. Okay. Now let's say in a reverse case where because whenever a stock goes up, it's a good thing because it's uh, gaining value. Okay. So that's why positive is green and negative is red. But let's say if you take a um, reverse case, so cost of something. So for obviously for a purchaser or for a consumer, if if the cost of something goes up, it's bad. So in that case, you'll have to change the color of this. For, for what I can do right now is let's let me go and just see what is the okay. The none is not expected here. So I'll just remove this. So as you can see, TCS stock, this was the value, and you can see this is incrementing. So this is the green sign and uh, the arrow is up. Now let me go back and let's try to change the delta color. So I'm gonna say delta delta color and i'm going to say inverse okay now let me go back and rerun you can see the arrow is still pointing up the neg uh, the value is still same but the color has changed now if you don't want any color what you can do is you can go over here and write off you go back and then you rerun and now you can see it doesn't matter whatever the sign is it will automatically remove the red or green and just give you the gray color okay so this is one thing that you can do lastly what i want to show you is json how to handle json data okay so for that you need to first open the json file so i'll open the json file for you so i'm uploading another video today and this is the json file this is the intents of the chatbot so this is the json file you can see it starts with curly brackets and ends with curly brackets and inside those also there is a list okay and uh, inside there are certain elements okay fine so there is a data this is the first element and then the entire element is a list now inside that list there are smaller elements as you can see over here this is the first element uh, sorry till here till till here till here is the first element then this is the second element 
over here from here to here um yeah till here this is the second element so as you can see there are six elements in total okay so i need to show this or use this in uh streamlet so this is a json file okay all intents dot uh, all intents underscore js and this is a json file so dot json so what i'm going to do is first i have to open the file okay so i'm going to f is equals to open and i'm going to copy paste the path i have already copied it here so this is the path okay now what i need to do is i need to load the json so i'm going to say dt is equals to json dot load and then pass f okay lastly what i'm going to do is i'm going to write st.json and then i'm going to pass dt now if i save this and go and rerun you can see the entire whatever we had it is printed over here but in a very good format out there i was using notepad so it was all you know crumbled up but here you can see it's you know you can see data of zero this is the first one zero this is one and then this is two and the last one should be five because uh, there are six elements so the indexed five and you if you want to close this you can close this close this you can close the entire thing you can close this also you can close the third one also fourth one also and fifth one also you can close all of this okay so you can go on and then open this now there is a way by which you can have everything in the closed format like this format so the way you do it is you go over here and in with dt you just write expanded x and dt expanded is equals to false so the default is true but if you go there now and you rerun see this has not changed if i go in and write here true okay you see again it will open up you open all the data so if i rerun okay so if i rerun it will open all the data okay so i don't know why it did not change but if i write it at false as false and then i go and rerun it will close everything but ideally i think over here if you write it true okay whatever so as you can see if you write expanded as true it gives you expanded but if you write expanded as false as i'm going to do right now if i write it as false and then i'm going to rerun it it does not expand so i hope you understood the video and please like and subscribe the video and subscribe to the channel and bye